Hey everybody, this is my Dell Vostro 3590 motherboard, which you may remember from a previous video. This motherboard is currently fully functional, however, we're going to change that. I want to simulate having a short on the main 19 volt rail, just to see what happens and see how we troubleshoot it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a known shorted capacitor, I'm going to introduce that after the power resistor which is down here and we're going to see what happens with the laptop and then I'm going to go through the troubleshooting procedure of how you would troubleshoot a short on the main 19 volt rail. Uh, let's quickly do a review of what happens to the voltage when it enters the circuit. This motherboard is quite nicely laid out so it's easy to follow where the voltage goes on it. So just to review it, our power cable is right here that comes onto the other side of the board but the 19 volts comes through to here onto this inductor down following around this path here down here to our MOSFETs so once it hits the MOSFETs if those two MOSFETs are switched on then our power comes through here through here to this power resistor and our schematic tells us that this is the main 19 volts rail so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to introduce my shorted capacitor in place of this one right here. You might see we've got three, I think these are three capacitors in a row here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to introduce my shorted capacitor in place of this one. And just to follow that same path along on our actual schematic, we have our power connector right here. So the pins that carry the 19 volts are 5 and 6 so they come through to the other side of the motherboard to that big inductor which was PL1 and then that goes around the trays down to our two MOSFETs which are these two right here then if they're switched on it carries the 19 volts to our power resistor and these are the three capacitors that we're looking at uh, on the board earlier so once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this capacitor with a shorted capacitor and I'm going to replace that now um, we're get then going to start taking some voltage readings and see how we would troubleshoot such a fault I've introduced that shorted capacitor so I've just put an arrow on it and I'm going to leave that arrow there just to mark out that that is the shorted capacitor on the board so what I've done next is with the power off I'm just going to introduce my two probes and I switched the multimeter into diode mode I placed the red probe to ground this time and placed the black probe to where my power resistor is and I measure zero volts on this that in diode mode indicates that there is a short so we now have a short introduced onto the motherboard so let's see how we would troubleshoot that if this was actually the scenario with a real laptop okay so we've introduced our shorted capacitor onto the 19 volt rail. I've plugged in my power adapter again. The light has stayed on on it. And I'm going to see how far into the circuit the 19 volts gets. So we're going to go back up to the top where the power jack is. So once again, our 19 volts comes in here onto the other side of the board, but then comes through here to our inductor. So I'm going to measure here and see with that shorted capacitor on the board if we're getting 19 volts here. So I'll place my red probe to here, multimeter in volts DC and I place my black probe to ground and we have 19 volts at this point I check on the other side of that inductor and there's also 19 volts here so we are actually getting uh, 19 volts to the motherboard even though there is a short capacitor uh, on the main 19 volt rail so I'm gonna trace that down so that comes down here down to our first MOSFET and with my probe here and once again my black probe on ground we're getting 19 volts at this point as well so this is the first MOSFET so this is controlled by the gate which is this pin right here let me zoom in a little bit so this MOSFET is controlled by the gate pin here there's 19 volts here however when I check for 19 volts on this side of the MOSFET there's nothing and when I check on the gate there's zero volts which means that it is not being turned on so just to look a little more closely at that first MOSFET, what you can see is that on our drain pins right here we have our 19 volts 
on our gate we have zero volts this is the gate pin here and our source we have zero so the MOSFET is being left switched off and that is because it's detected that there is an issue somewhere else on the circuit and it's not prepared to turn this on what that should look like you might remember from our previous video is when working the gate was 24.6 volts which switches this MOSFET on and then we had 19 volts on these pins here also so we've established that the first MOSFET is not switching on now if this was a real world and not simulation what I would do here would be to look around and see if there was any shorts on the motherboard at this point because there's obviously a reason why that MOSFET is not switching on so how I would do that would be switch my multimeter to diode mode plug out the power adapter from the laptop place my red probe to ground and then check at different points to see if I'm detecting a short so on this I place my probe here it gives me a reading of OL so there's no short here I place my probe here it gives a reading of OL you could do this for all of the other secondary circuits as well we obviously know that there's a short in the 19 volt this rail this time but it could be somewhere else but using the same procedure so I place my probe here and I get zero zero so we now recognize the short is essentially from this point on so given that we know that there's a short here what do we do to try and find it there are many many components and we can't take every single one of those off and test them individually so how we do that how we test and hopefully quickly find out which component has failed is by using voltage injection so I'm going to show that step next it's easier for me to demonstrate voltage injection using the schematic first so this is the section of the circuit that we're getting the short circuit on so I introduce my DC power supply right here and what we need to do is connect that first of all to ground now these capacitors are all connected to a common ground so I'm just going to mark that common ground here we're going to connect our power supply black probe to ground and then we're going to inject right here so I connect my red probe to this section right here the idea with this is that we inject uh, power at this point and then whichever component is shorted will carry the current to ground and will heat up and then by the fact that it heats up when it carries the current to ground we can identify it either using a thermal camera or alcohol or by touch so that's how it looks with the schematic I'm going to show that on the board next back to our motherboard I'm going to show how we inject voltage so this is my power supply I place my black probe to ground and then I got my red probe and connect it in at the power resistor so what we're going to start off with is 1 volt and 500 milliamps so what this is going to do is it will limit it to 1 volt or 500 milliamps whichever comes first so when I do that with 500 milliamps there is nothing that warms up on the board that's very low so you normally won't get anything but it's a good I started at that and then incremented by 500 milliamps each time when I set the voltage injection to 2.5 amps at 1 volt I then found that that capacitor started to heat up it was very very warm to touch so it, it would be possible to identify that as the shorted component by touch alone I actually brought it up to 3 amps and when I did that it would literally burn your hand it was so hot but that is how I would use voltage injection to flush out whichever component is shorted on the motherboard so that's all I've got for this week um, nothing came in for repair this week which is why I had to sort of break something myself but this is actually a good way of learning how to do you know voltage injection get a board that you know is working get a capacitor that you know is dodgy put it in simulate a short test out voltage injection get used to it and it's a it, it's a very very useful means of you know testing this out before you have to do it on a real world example um, hopefully something is getting broken as we speak and will be on my desk from Monday morning and when it is I'll do a video of it for next weekend thanks for watching please leave comments below